So, uh, what are we doing today? Uh, so, I am going to probably just set up a new project. Um, we'll see how much time that takes and, and, uh, and so on. Um, so, uh, this is my SAS Pegasus uh, dashboard where I have all the projects that I build with Pegasus. Um, and I'm going to create a new project here. Um, I'll explain a little bit about this project. Uh, so Slack recently, uh, Slack the chat app recently um, changed their data retention strategy uh, or, or policy for free tiers um, from something like 10,000 messages to 90 days. Uh, and that makes sense for them to make money. Uh, but for someone like me who, who runs a, a community on Slack, um, where, uh, you know, I definitely can't afford to pay $5 a month for every community member, um, to upgrade to Slack pro, uh, it is, uh, not feasible to pay that much. So I had an idea that I should try to create a product that, um, would allow me to archive the information in my Slack, which has this aspect of Slack has a lot of good stuff in that, you know, people documenting, you know, how to do certain things, issues they ran into, et cetera. Um, so I'd like to have a, a knowledge base of all that Slack history available, um, but, uh, but not have to pay Slack, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars a month for it. Um, so I had the idea that I would build a product that lets you sort of archive your Slack history. Um, and it's very much scratching my own itch. I want this thing for Pegasus and, uh, and I figured if I want it, if, uh, and if I would pay for it, which I would, uh, it might make a good SaaS product. Um, so I'm just going to call this thing Slack archive for now. Um, I will come up with a better name at some point, but, um, I will just do that. I'm going to put in Slack archive as the project ID, um, the description, uh, archive your Slack history. I don't know. Sure. I don't have a domain. Uh, there's my email. I'm going to use Teams for this uh, because each my my thought is that each um, doxing myself already. It's different email address. Uh, each team is a. Uh, like a Slack community, essentially. So like I'm in a Pegasus community and then I'm, you know, in these other, you know, whatever, Django corporate Slacks. And each one of those will be a team in Pegasus. Um, I won't let, I won't enable these social logins. Um, I will enable, yeah, a lot of this stuff. For CSS framework, I'm gonna use Tailwind CSS. Um, it'll be a bit of a, a Interesting to see how that goes. I, I, I've never done a, a Project of my own with Tailwind. I've only sort of helped others. Um, so we'll see if I fumble around with it, but I think it's sort of the the right choice in um, in this day and age uh, I will use subscriptions because um, Because I'm gonna charge for this thing um, my billing model uh I'm gonna start with standard uh, for now. I think um, I might change my billing model at some point to uh, reflect that. You know, if your community has 500 people, maybe you pay 50 bucks a month. But it's it's definitely not gonna be sort of like a per user thing the same way that Slack is, because um, I don't want to gouge people on that. Um, database. I will use Postgres. I will use Docker. I will use Sentry. I will deploy this to, let's see, fly.io maybe. Um, haven't decided, but uh, interested to, um, yeah, I think that's kind of the one that I'm most uh, most likely to use. CI, GitHub, Jack in, GitHub Actions, Pegasus version, latest. Okay, so I'll save this. Um, and then I will download the code for this. And yeah, so, if anyone watching this isn't familiar with Pegasus, uh, why are you watching this? That'd be one question. But uh, but um, so so Pegasus is is a code based generator, um, and based on that 
configuration that I just put in there, it's it's created a customized code base um, for my application, um, which I will now open uh, and extract. Sure. Uh, show the files. I can hear my stream coming out of my headphones. I'm just going to turn that off. Right. Okay. So that's not the file. This is the file. Oops. What is going on? Oh, I think the, the stream is like killing my computer. Okay. Here's the code. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this. So um, we'll go, I keep all my projects in this source personal. So I'm going to move that to here. OK, cool. Um, deactivate this other virtual environment. Um, if I were demoing Pegasus, I would just run make init, which, um, which will uh, set up all of my stuff with Docker and whatnot. Um, I, I actually prefer to, to run things natively in virtual environments, so um, so I'll do that. Uh, and let's see. So the first thing I'll do, let me make this a little bigger, is I will uh, create a virtual environment. I use um, virtual end wrapper. I think it's kind of old school, but it works for me. Um, Slack archive, let's try Python 310. Okay, um, I'll set the virtual imp project. That's like a little a little tip that lets you sort of, it, it lets you go CD project and it will always return you to this directory and it will also um, bring you into this directory whenever you activate your virtual environment, which is a nice little thing. Um, and so the very first thing that I will do when I set up a new Pegasus project is I will commit like the code as is. Uh, and the way I'm going to do that, first I'm going to create a new repo on GitHub. So I'll call this Slack Archive um, description, Slack Archive, whatever. And I will just create this as a private repo. And then I'll copy this. And let's see, what do I want to do now? I want to do git init, git remote set URL, or that thing. Nope, oh, git remote add. Um, and then let's see, git add dot. Yeah. I think that added everything. Dash M initial Pegasus dump push get status get push. I've heard that in newer versions of Git that you don't have to run this setup stream business thing. I should probably upgrade. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, so my code's pushed up here. Um, I've got this readme with instructions on doing these various things. Um, I think I just saw that this docker, this is a bug, this should be bolded. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> okay, so what now? Um, I guess now would be a good time to open the code. So let's do that. I use PyCharm. Um, personal Slack, Slack archives. Uh, cool. Okay. Um, I 
wants to create a virtual environment. I, I probably, again, should use PatchArm to manage my virtual environments, but I do it on the command line. Um, but if I configure the interpreter here, um, nope, I'm using an existing one. This is what happens when you have way too many projects. Virtual ends. Uh, where did that thing go? Slack archive. Bin. Python. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. And then now we can pip install our requirements. Um, the other thing I'll need to do, which I'll do in a different window just while we're waiting, is I'll do, uh, let's see, let's create DB, uh, let's localhost p that's big U. Uh, oh, that needs a name. Call it Slack Archive. Cool. Uh, those requirements are still installing. Uh, work on this thing. So yeah, you can see when I did work on it, my virtual environment brought me into that same working directory. Um. Okay. Cool. So let's see. My guess is we need to. Oh, I don't know if the streaming is going to work with my apparently underpowered computer. Oh my god, what happens? Um, okay, so let's just see what happens if I run. So if I'm going to make migrations first, and just for for people who are hoping to um, who are hoping to use this as some sort of guide to using Pegasus or getting started with Pegasus, um, so I'm, I'm I just kind of have these steps memorized, but this is all documented in the getting started con section. So um, if you're using Docker, you just go over here, uh, but this is basically what I'm doing. So I I set up my virtual environment, I installed my requirements, I set up my database. Now I'm making my database migrations. We'll see if that works. Where did that go? That oh, did work. Let's see if migrate works. It might be the case that all of the default like database username and password and nope. Okay. I need to fix the database password somewhere. Um so, uh, data, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. So, Django database password. Um, Pegasus should come with a .env. Maybe it doesn't come with a .env file. Uh, oh, it will come in with a .env file. Um, in the next release, but for now I'll copy this dot and dot dev to dot env. and let me just make sure. So, um, yeah, so dot env. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with dot env, it's just a, it's a way for you to define environment variables in um, in your uh, in like this um, instead of any other way you would do it, and then. Django reads this file and um, and populates these into the environment, and then in the settings file, it uh, will sort of like pull these things out of the database. Um, so I should be able to just 
change this. So this is the Docker config. Um, but I should be able to do that. And I think that should work because I think my local DB is just Postgres. Yeah. should just be able to run the server, I think. Let's see if this works. Hooray! All right, that's cool. Um, sounds good. So let's create an account. Let's do this. Um, cool. That all seems to be working. Um, and then, yeah, so I just created a user. Um, I want this user to be an admin, so I'll, I'll do that as well. Um, there's this promote user to super user command, I think. For yeah, okay. So that will give me access to the Django admin where I can start managing things. And I think that will do it for now. Um, so yeah, so my project is up and running. I think that's a good breaking point. I might stop this and then come right back uh, and dive into some coding. Um, but I'll leave this here. And uh, yeah, hope, hopefully that was interesting. There were four people watching that. Amazing. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, hello. Um, all right, that was fun. Uh, what do I say? Like, like and tell me if you want me to do this again, if it was useful. Uh, cool. Very good. I'm going to stop this thing now.